In this video, I'm going to show you the exact coding setup that I use every single day as a professional blockchain developer. I spent years refining my coding setup, like getting it just right. And for the most part, this is the exact coding setup that I've used to earn over a million dollars as a developer. So I'm going to take you over the shoulder, you know, actually inside my computer so that you can see what I use and get some ideas and inspiration for your own setup. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, smash the like button down below and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish, uh, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. I can show you how to build your own real world projects. So you can land a high paying job, become a freelancer, you know, whatever. So the first item in my toolkit that I want to talk about today is my terminal. Uh, because I use this pretty much every single day. So even if I end up not writing code on a specific day, I almost always touch my terminal. And so for that reason, it's really important for me to be able to uh, use it, for it to speed up my workflow, to be able to switch between projects really quickly. So I want to talk about everything that I've implemented in my terminal to help me do that, all right? Because I've refined this over many, many years, okay? So the first thing I want to talk about is Tmux because this is an invaluable part of my workflow. So Tmux is a terminal multiplexer. So the biggest thing that I use use Tmux for is managing multiple projects, multiple panes uh, when I'm using my terminal. So you can see, uh, you know, right here, here's a good example of what that looks like. And uh, I started using Tmux a while back, and this is something that I'll basically never give up. So let me just give you a quick demo of how I use Tmux. I'm not really a Tmux power user, but I'll show you the, the at least the small benefits that I get. So you can see I have a project down here. I can just name this project one. All right. And inside of project one, I can split my panes like this, all right? You know, I can do this. And I can say, you know, start server here. And of course, it's not a real command, but I could have a server, server process running here. I could have a console running here, say start console, all right? And then of course, I could run tests in this window like this, you know, say run tests. And then this window, I could just do my basic git commit you know, dash AM, make changes, something like that. All right, of course, it's not going to work. Again, I'll, these are all just dummy commands to illustrate what I'm talking about. So anyways, yeah, I split my, uh, you know, terminal like this so that I'm not, you know, constantly switching between tabs or anything like that. It really helps things speed up. I use a pretty big monitor, so I keep this on, you know, full screen on like a 30-inch, 32-inch monitor, something like that. So I can really see a lot of stuff at one time. The other big benefit is switching between projects because I work on multiple projects at a time. And so with Tmux, you can actually create new panes, all right, and switch between them. So like I can have these panes here. I can start a new project here in a new directory. It's so like CD, you know, code. I can, you know, look at a different project inside of here and then have a different directory running, okay? Split this as well in whatever configuration I want to. And so this is what I pretty much use is, is every active project that I have that I hop back and forth between on a daily basis or a weekly basis, I almost always have them running here at the bottom. And then I can quickly just bounce between contexts. Let's say I need to make a quick change and push it to a server or like monitor something on the blockchain. Then I'll just quickly switch projects, run the command in that terminal, uh, and then switch back to whatever I was working on, okay? Now, the really cool thing that I've uh, got dialed in over the years is uh, recalling all my settings. So whenever you restart your computer, normally with Tmux, you have to... Uh, you know, reset up all this stuff. And of course that takes time. So I have something called Tmux Resurrect, which saves all of my uh, current settings, okay? And so whenever I restart my computer, I can just recall those after a system restart and I don't have to spend all the time setting up those terminal tabs. Now, of course you won't like save your server processes while they're running or anything like that, but it'll still save you a ton of time setting up your configurations from scratch. So I've also done some additional configuration with my Tmux setup here. Uh, you can see this bar at the bottom, all right? It, you know, it, it tells me a lot of information. Uh, it tells me the Tmux session I'm running on. So this is actually the second session. My normal professional session is running on, you know, for number one. It tells me the uptime of Tmux. So this particular session has been running for one day, five hours, 36 minutes. It's got my projects at the bottom, which I can uh, yeah, I can use the Vim commands to tab between these, or I can just use my mouse like this because I have mouse mode enabled, which is really nice. All right. Next, you can see my uh, battery status indicator here. So this is actually the current status level of the battery on my laptop, of course, the time of day and today's date, uh, my user that I'm logged in with, and my computer name. So you can definitely configure this, uh, this bar down here more, but this is all the information that I like to personally see.
So the next major part of my terminal setup is Z shell. All right. So what does it do? Well, it's an advanced shell. So if you've heard of Bash, for example, that's the default shell inside of Linux. You know, stands for born again shell. Uh, well, Z shell is is a new iteration on that that uh, has some performance, has some improvements. Okay. So basically, like, uh, it has a lot of nice auto completion. Um, it has plugins, uh, that you can add to your shell, which I use. I use the Git plugins. It has, uh, it'll fix your spelling mistakes and also have better auto completion. Okay. So it's pretty easy to install and configure. And I personally used Oh My ZSH. So this is a framework, uh, for configuring Z shell. All right. So it's really easy to install. And you can see the kind of uh, things you can make it do here. So you can see your computer name, like the current Git repository that you're working in, uh, the branch name. You can see the, uh, the the tree of the branches, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of nice Git plugins that I personally use. So I'll show you some, show you some of those right now. So here's some of that in action. All right, I'll go and actually enter into a real project. This is a tutorial project that's live on my uh, public GitHub. It's called ETHSwap. So it's a, a decentralized cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, so you can just say CD ETHSwap. I'll show you like how I would work on this. Okay, so uh, here you can already see some of the highlighting provided by Z Shell. So this is the Git branch. That's the master branch. Okay, um, there's a lot of nice Git commands that I can uh, you know have shortcuts for with this plugin here. Uh, but that's what's really nice is if I check out a new branch, that's like Git, you know, check out dash b, you know, my branch. Then you can see uh, the new branch reflected here. Okay. And just to show you how I might work on a real project, like we can go to CD ETH swap. All right. And then I can also, uh, sorry, I can also change the name down here. Rename the window to ETH swap. All right. So you can see that here. So ETH swap, you know, project one, we can change that name to, uh, you know, default or whatever. All right. So I can constantly go back and forth from the default project and ETH swap, right? So next I want to talk about the syntax highlighting, the actual theme for my terminal, uh, because people ask me about this a lot, like, hey, what color scheme do you use in your terminal? Well, I use something called Material Monokai, all right? So Monokai's, uh, you know, uh, a pretty old color theme for text editors. Um, it's supported on terminal as well, and also Material Design. Um, they sort of mash those two things together to create this Material Monokai theme. So you can search for that on GitHub. That's what I use. This is the Vim version. Version, uh, but it's the same thing that works in my terminal. So you can see that, you know, highlighting here. Okay, that's exactly what I use uh, inside my terminal. I like this dark version. Uh, I can look at it for a long time without getting tired. Uh, it preserves meaningful syntax highlighting, and that's why I like it. All right. So you can see uh, my preferences here. We can also see the font. So here's a material Monokai theme. I also use Monaco font and 12 point. So that's the color scheme and this is the font. And this is the actual size. So if you want to do exactly what I do, that's it. All right. So next I want to talk about my text editor. So I personally use Sublime Text. All right. There's lots of great text editors out there. Sublime Text is just what I happen to have started with. Um, that's one of the big reasons I prefer it because I've gotten so good at it and so fast at it that there's really no compelling reason for me to change because it would take me a long time to learn something new. Uh, and I'm not going to get a very good ROI out of that. All right. I know lots of developers like to try new things and do all that kind of stuff. That's not really my personality. I kind of like to stick with something that works really well simply because I have so many other things going on, like, you know, running this YouTube channel, uh, doing projects and everything. It just never makes sense for me to learn a new, a new text editor. Okay. So if you want to learn something else, that's, that's great. But, Sublime Text has done really well for me over the years. So I want to talk about something that uh, people ask me this a lot because I do this in my videos where I say subl dot. So this is a special shortcut that I've configured on my computer that will open the current terminal directory in Sublime Text. So if I enter, uh, it'll open up my text editor like this. All right. And you can see all the code for the current directory. So I'll break that down. So subl uh, is a sim link. All right. It's basically just a shortcut to a command on my system that opens Sublime Text, all right? So you can see how to configure that yourself. If you just Google uh, Sublime Text Sim Link, you should see a document that looks like this that'll show you how to run this command, all right? That will uh, basically allow you to install this on your computer as well, all right? So basically, subl is the sim link, and then dot is the current directory, uh, which just opens the current directory. Uh, inside of Sublime Text. So now I want to talk about my actual Sublime Text configuration. Okay, so if I go through here, I can see a lot of different uh, things. So this is a Truffle project. This is a blockchain project with uh, smart contracts and also a React.js application in it. So you can see what some of that code looks like. 
All right, so we can go to source directory, look at the contracts and see this uh, eSwap contract. So here's Solidity programming language. All right, so you can see this has a syntax highlighting. It looks like it's supposed to. So there's two things I want to talk about there. First is the color scheme, uh, the theme that I use. So I use Monokai Pro, all right? So Monokai is one of the original, uh, syn you know, syntax highlighting uh, themes for Sublime Text. Uh, it's based on the old TextMate theme as well. Um, and I showed you Material Monokai that I use for my terminal, but Monokai Pro is the one that I use for uh, Sublime Text. So this is also available in VS Code. So if you're a VS Code user and you want to use exactly what I use, you can do that as well. So um, it's basically just a refined version of... Uh, you know, Monokai that supports multiple languages. I like it better than the default Monokai. That's why I use it. All right. So the other big uh, piece of configuration that I want to talk about here is the Ethereum package. Okay. Because if you were to open this um, out of the box, this file wouldn't look right. Okay. This is Solidity. And I don't think Sublime Text supports Solidity syntax highlighting out of the box. So I have a special plugin. Uh, it's the Ethereum package. This is for Sublime Text 2 and 3. So it supports the Solidity and Viper programming languages. So this is a must-have if you want to write Ethereum smart contracts inside Sublime Text. I installed this a long time ago. I uh, use it you know, pretty much every single day. And uh, you know, I haven't touched it basically since I installed it. So Sublime Text is a really nice package manager where you can just uh, you know, do you know, package control and then you can put in your URL and install a package that way. They're really, it's really easy to install things. That's one of the reasons I like Sublime Text is you can add uh, packages directly from in the application. Lots of other text editors support that too, but Sublime Text has done that from pretty much day one. All right. So the other thing, let's look at some JavaScript because if you're developing dApps, you're probably going to touch a front-end application at some point. And if you ever do any of my tutorials, you'll definitely do that. So let's look at some of the components. Uh, we can look at this app.js file here. So, of course, this is JavaScript. Uh, this is React.js. So you can, of course, you can see that by the class here. All right. So uh, React and ES6 have some, some special syntax highlighting uh, sometimes. So I use something called Naomi. All right, so this is a uh, this is advanced or sorry, enhanced syntax highlighting for JavaScript, ES6, uh, any like a lot of times people are adding new things onto the JavaScript uh, frameworks. If you if you're looking at TypeScript or like uh, Flow or Babel or any of that kind of stuff, there's always like new stuff that keeps coming out, right? If you touch any of those kinds of projects, then Naomi's a really good, handy uh, syntax highlighting that stays on top of all that stuff. It gives you some additional semantic highlighting, too, for existing languages. So Naomi's what I use. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is my actual computer, uh, because this is a big part of my productivity as a developer. So I upgraded to the uh, brand new MacBook Pro last year, whenever it came out at the end of 2019. So this is a 2019 MacBook Pro. It's a 16-inch. Uh, of course, I'm a Mac guy, if you haven't uh, figured that out by watching these tutorials or watching this video, or hey, may, hey, maybe you're brand new to this channel. Yeah, I use a Mac. I have for a long time. I find that uh, with Mac, a lot of stuff just works out of the box, okay? Um, it's okay to use Windows for sure. I have some videos on my channel uh, how to use Windows. Uh, a lot of these commands will also work on Linux. You know, I have support for Windows, Linux, et cetera, et cetera, Mac, and so the blockchain bootcamp. And uh, but anyways, I'm going to talk about my specific setup because that's what this video is about. This is a 16-inch MacBook Pro. Uh, it's 2.4 gigahertz, 8-core Intel Core i9, 32 gigabytes of RAM, um, it is a, I think it's got, I think it's a two terabyte hard drive. Um, it's got this AMD Radeon Pro 550 or sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, these numbers, you can just pause the screen basically and take a look here. Uh, sometimes I have a hard time even reading these. So that being said, you know, this of course was not a, uh, a cheap computer by any stretch of the imagination. But the way I'm looking at it is it's a worthy investment because it's going to produce a high ROI for me over the long term. I plan on keeping this computer for five years plus. So all the time that I'll save over that period will definitely be worth it. So anyways, that's the computer that I use. 
All right, so that's an overview of my personal coding setup that I use on a daily basis. Again, this is the setup I can't live without. I use this all the time. I spent years refining this, and I want to share this with you in this video today. So, of course, you know, smash the like button down below. Subscribe to this channel, especially if you like this video. It really helps others uh, so that these videos can get found and they can learn about blockchain too. You know, how to become developers, how to take advantage of this big opportunity that's right in front of us. Okay. So the other thing I'll say about this setup is, you know, I've changed this a lot over time, uh, but this is mostly what I've used consistently over the years. And I've mostly just stuck with what I like and what I know. And like I said earlier, it's just never made sense for me to switch because it would take so much time for me to get really fast at those new things. So if there's something else that you like and you're already fast and efficient at it, there's no good reason to like switch. You don't have to use exactly what I use to be productive, right? Maybe you like trying new things. Hey, that's okay. But at the end of the day, you really just want to find something that works for you and just stick with it, especially if you value productivity. All right, so that's all I've got for today. Um, again, if you want to get started mastering blockchain today, then how can you do that? You can head over to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you to master blockchain step-by-step step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. I'll show you how to build a real world project, a decentralized cryptocurrency exchange. All right. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. And I help people with zero programming backgrounds become real world blockchain developers. I can show you everything that you need to know from square one. Just click the link down below to get started today. All right. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.